first time I was exposed to neon at the Neon Glass Blowing School, it was something so different, it really grabbed my attention and it kept me interested at a young age to stick with it and keep practicing and practicing through the apprenticeships to get to where I could become a functioning glass bowler. I have been working in neon for 30 years. The first opportunity I had to work was in Honolulu, Hawaii. I worked there as an apprentice under a couple other glass blowers for about four years. And after that run, we had an opportunity to go with one of the glass blowers I worked with to Holland and work in Amsterdam. We were going to introduce the American style of making neon to the Dutch and German market. We got some wonderful opportunities to go and do trade show demonstrations all around Europe and meet and work with glass blowers from around the world. And everybody works glass differently. Getting the raw materials and the way that the glass blowers use their equipment and the different types of tubing and torches that they use. Every country has their own specific way of doing it. The work that comes into the neon shop is different every day. So in a given week, we can do repair work for commercial contractors. We can build signs that would be in storefronts, architectural lighting. We can do antique sign restoration. It varies widely. The basic fundamentals of neon sign production haven't changed much at all in 100 years. It's a very old-fashioned technique. It's hand-blown glass tubing, pulled on a vacuum, evacuated and backfilled with a gas. The only thing that's changed in that is the, the modern components of the equipment that we use for processing. Basically, today, we make it the same way they made it 100 years ago. Matt, Hello, nice to see you. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. Got time to check out some you tubes? You bet, yep. FMS company makes the Brillite tubes that we use in the neon industry. There's only a couple of companies in the United States that do the coating of the tubing for the neon industry, and we're lucky to have FMS right here in town. The uh, client, he just likes yellow and green yeah. together. Green and gold is kind of his company okay. colors. Yep. Yeah, if you put them up underneath there, the powder will fluoresce a little bit. We use uh, the black light to uh, excite the phosphors and see what color they are before putting them into uh, a neon tube. Yeah, these are just different uh, minerals that are uh, mined out of the ground and refined to the state that we see them here, but they uh, just fluoresce different colors. The ultraviolet light strikes the phosphor and uh, causes it to just emit light like that in, in the different colors. Our process kind of from start to finish then is to buy these big, huge boxes of clear glass tubes. They're four feet long, come in different diameters. And then we take the, the phosphors in a powder form and mix them with some liquids to make, get them into a, a liquid that can be flowed into the tube in, this, in the coating room there. And then after the tubes are coated, we uh, take them out of the coating room and put them on the annealing oven to burn the organic binders out of the tubes. And, by the time they ride off the end of the, of the cooling lear, they're ready to be packed up and sold to people like Matt and others who make neon signs. This project is a commission by the Veidt Automotive Foundation for a sculptural piece of neon to hang in their museum up in Monticello, Minnesota. It's based off of a 1950s advertising piece called a Sputnik, which is modeled after the first Russian satellite. And it's, it's kind of a modern abstract piece. It incorporates spun aluminum and three-dimensional neon coils, and it will hang from the ceiling in their car museum 
throwing down light on all the chrome bumpers and cool paint jobs of the cars underneath. After years of commercial sign production and neon work, it's fun to do something that you've never done before. something that we're just creating as we go. There's not really something that we can look to for guidance with it. We're designing and working with the coil sizes and making the pieces, test fitting them and seeing what scale works proper for this. Colors are achieved with stained glass. So this is glass from Murano, Italy, and it's a filter glass, which means it's an actual colored glass with a phosphor coating on the inside. And when the light transfers through the phosphor coating and the pigmented glass, it gives a deep, rich color tone without a lot of luminous output, but the color tones are really, really deep and luxurious. It's not used a lot in commercial signage. But it's really nice for sculptural applications. I'm here today at Vite Automotive Foundation to do the installation of our Kinetic Chaos Neon Sculptural piece. The room where we are installing the sculpture is a round car barn that was built specifically to house a beautiful collection of antique cars and signs and vintage memorabilia. I think what keeps me in the neon industry after 30 years is the chance to adventure out and try something different. Every day something different comes into the shop, but like in this instance of the sculptural piece, it was an opportunity to take something to a level that I've wanted to and just haven't had the chance to yet. I'm really happy with the way the piece turned out. It's something that has been in thought process for many, many years. It's uh, rewarding to see that people enjoy the work and they're really happy with the finished product. That's kind of the driving force that keeps me going.